Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I am Whitney and today um, we've got the second part of the rayon vlog for you guys. Um, but before we get into that, real quick. <laughs> um, today, Love Notions Feature Friday is a pattern re-release. So this is, um, it's the Luna Loungewear pattern. I know you guys are shocked. <laughs> but it's a loungewear pattern that features a um, kind of a camisole style nighty. Um, cami, like just a, a spaghetti strap cami, um, shorts and like elastic waist shorts and or capri pants. So um, I had made, and I'll link up to that video right here, I had made myself the nighty, the camisole and the um, capri pants as kind of a PJ set with my Distachify fabric and I showed that off on Tuesday. So today they're re-releasing it on the new block. It comes with the full bust measurement, or the full bust fronts, it comes in the full size range. Um, they've made some adjustments to the shelf bra that's included in that, which I love to use for my nightwear. I think it just makes everything very comfortable being a full busted woman. Um, anyway, just really, really great. I uh, really talked about it all on Tuesday, but <laughs> it's $5 today only, which today is the 5th of August, 2022. So today only the pattern is $5. So definitely go have a uh, grab at that. And um, yeah, it's a great one to have in your catalog because I mean, especially for nightwear, but it's, I mean, it's a camisole top or I mean, cause that could be a little sundress. It doesn't have to be a nighty, just depending on the fabric you use. Um, if you are smaller chested and feel comfortable with built-in bras, it's the perfect pattern. <laughs> anyway, $5 today only. I know that's a shocker because I wasn't hinting at it at all on Tuesday, but there you go. Okay, rayon. Now, I kind of felt like today's video is a little bit shorter than last time, mostly because the point of all these, the rayon vlogs, was just to kind of talk you through tips and tricks um, for working with rayon and that kind of thing um, as I came across them. So, Today, you're gonna see um, I make the, um, well, I made the Hollyock, is it the Hollyock or the Holyock um, dress from Cashmere I made that in the, um, oh, what's it called? Leopard Love, one of the new exclusive uh, Minerva prints from their first batch. Love it, it's, it's such a great dress. Um, you don't get to see me doing anything on that just because there wasn't really anything new to show you on that one, but I will show you, I'll show you right now. This is what it looks like on me. <laughs> put some twirls here, um, right there. But I also am working on the, um, let's see, I made myself a two Montrose, cashmere at Montrose tops, one out of my, um, oh, the tropical rayon that has the tigers on it, and then another one with the Alton sleeves that was the sunprint palms, and I made a matching pair of sky shorts, which um, I made in the last vlog as well. Um, anyway, i showing you how to cut out, how I like to cut out rayon fabric, because that was a big request. But I also wanted to talk about taking care of your rayon, um, taking care of the fabric and taking care of, you know, pre-washing and all that kind of stuff, because that was another question that I got a lot of. So, um, oh, but before we get into that, while I'm talking, I'm also, I had promised footage of my daughter in the dress, the Francesca dress that I made her last week. So, um, was that last week, week before? Whenever the last vlog was. I didn't have any footage of her in it at that point, so here's footage of her actually in it. But, I think next Friday, I'm gonna do a roundup of everything that I've made, because I do have a couple more projects that I would like to make from that original fabric haul. Sorry itch um, from that original fabric haul that I did a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'd like to get those made up and then um, I was going to do kind of a roundup of all the rayon pieces that I had made um, in like the past month I guess. Um, so anyway that is the plan and I will talk about the patterns in more detail and I'll have them you know twirls and me styled in them because I'm just showing you kind of hodgepodge me in it like oh here's my new shirt type thing so <laughs> I'll show it to you styled and prettied up and stuff uh, next Friday. Okay caring for rayon. Number one thing not all rayons are created equal. I've said this before I my biggest recommendation is to buy the best quality that you can afford. Um, there's a wide range in rayons you can find really really cheap rayons you can find rayons that are you know you know, rayons for, you know, $5 a yard or a meter, all the way up to rayons that are $20 a yard or a meter. Um, and they're, you know, obviously varies greatly. Um, but yeah, not to say you can't find high quality rayons for an, an expensive price, because that can definitely happen. But for the most part, my biggest 
tip is to buy the best quality of rayon that you can afford because there really is a big difference and the better the quality, the easier it is to work with. I know that that's a big beef with a lot of people. Also, if you have not worked with rayon in the past, oh, I don't know, five, 10 years, give it a go again. I know a lot of people were like, oh, I used to work with rayon, you know, many, many, you know, 30 years ago and it made me hot and all this other stuff. Rayon should not make you hot. In fact, rayon is a natural fiber that has gone through a chemical process. Um, so it is a natural slash man-made fiber um, because starts off natural material that then gets, which is usually a wood cellulose, sometimes bamboo, um, some sort of a cellulose original natural product goes through a chemical process and then it becomes the fiber. So um, it has help, man help, <laughs> to make it into a fiber. Um, but it's very breathable. In fact, it should feel like you're not wearing anything. So, um, but I have had a lot of people, they're like, oh no, rayon's so hot to, to wear and it really shouldn't be. And I'm, I don't know, like polyester is very hot, to, can be very hot to wear. Um, nylon can be very hot to wear, but um, yeah, rayon is not. Anyway, that being said, give it a try again if you haven't in a while. <laughs> it has come a, quite a long way since um, its inception, uh, which I think was I think was during World War II rationing because rayon was meant to be a replacement for silk during all the rationing and stuff during the I think it was World War II, maybe World War One, but I think it was World War II. Anyway. <laughs> When caring for your rayon, I surge the cut ends of all my woven fabrics when I get them, if I'm going to be laundering them. I mean, obviously my wools that I'm going to make an overcoat out of, if I'm not ever going to wash it, if that's going to be something I'm always maybe taking to a dry cleaner on the occasion that I do take it to the dry cleaner, like once in a blue moon, um, I, I honestly just throw it in a dryer with a damp towel and, and let some steam shrinkage happen and then call it good. But if I'm gonna be laundering, which I do most, of my woven fabrics, I serge the cut ends of uh, my fabric for a couple of reasons. And you don't have to serge. You could um, zigzag it or do the overlock stitch in your machine. Just something to secure those. In fact, you could even run a straight stitch right along that cut edge if you wanted to. Just something that's gonna keep fray from um, happening and also stabilize that edge because rayon is much weaker when it is wet and so it can easily get yanked out off of grain. So if you've got a nice stable edge, the selvage edges are already stable. Those have been woven in, they're already nice and stable, but if you just stabilize those cut edges, it's gonna make sure number one, everything stays on grain. Number two, it keeps things from um, unraveling on you so you don't have where you pull it out of the wash and it's just like that twisted ball because uh, you know some strings have gotten around it and it's just like, like a tie-dye twist. <laughs> Everything's just like a big wad and by the time you get it all opened up and stuff, you find like dry pieces in the middle that never got even wet. Um, it keeps that from happening. So uh, that is what I do with all my woven fabric. Wash them on cold, um, a cold cycle, and then I put my yardage in the dryer at like a regular, I don't know, medium heat um, there in the dryer so that the yardage gets all of the shrink out that it might have. Now, I do not dry my, my pieces once they are made up. Ideally, you wouldn't be drying rayon, you would let it air dry, but I like to air, I like to um, put the yardage into the dryer just in case something happens. And a, I mean, just today, a shirt that I don't normally dry got thrown into the dryer on, myself, I did it, and I didn't mean for it to. Anyway, I think it's okay, but I, it was one of those tops I was gonna try not to put in the dryer, but this way, You've taken, you know, you're not going to pull your top out and it be, you know, two sizes smaller than you meant for it to be. Um, so you're not going to ruin anything. Once the garment is made up, you know, give, give your fabric a good press. Although if you pull it out of the dryer right after it's dried, you shouldn't have any creases. Now rayon will crease if it's left in a pile, but <laughs> if you pull it right out and, you know, give it a good, you know, quick little iron, it's usually good to go. What I love about rayon is that, um, it steams beautifully. I, I really don't iron anything. I press things. I mean, I'll iron yardage before I work with it and then I'll press seams and do all that kind of pressing as I sew. But when it comes to my garments that are already made, I, I literally, I mean, very, very rarely do I ever pull out my home iron to do any actual ironing. <laughs> but I do use my industrial steamer on the on occasions. 
So once my items have been made, throw them in the wash, wash them on cold. Um, depending on the garment, sometimes I'll put it in a lingerie bag just so it doesn't get you know completely beat up in the washing machine. And then I hang it up to air dry. Now sometimes you'll get some crinkles that are in there just from air drying, but once I've hung it up to air dry, I'll give it like a quick little snap to try and smooth out some of the major wrinkles. Um, but it will dry a little crispy, kind of, if that makes sense. The quick fix for that is just to toss it in the dryer. Um, right before, Once it's air dried, it's completely dry. If you toss it in the dryer for just a couple of minutes um, on a warm setting, a lot of that will just fall right out and then it just goes on beautifully and you're fine. Um, another alternative is to steam it with a steamer because Rayon loves steam, so it'll those wrinkles will just fall right out. But yeah, I very rarely iron anything. Now, if you're taking Rayon on a vacation and it's in a suitcase, my first recommendation is to roll it, don't fold it. So um, fold it and then roll it up into rolls. That's gonna keep things from getting horribly creased and it also packs much more compact. Um, and then once you get to where you're going, just hang those pieces up and you'll be surprised the amount of wrinkles that'll fall out um, just from being hung back up. So those are my big tips for rayon. Again, I don't really ever iron my rayon, <laughs> ever. I'll hit it with the steamer if things are really bad, but for the most part, it's just, you know, it hangs in the closet, give it a good snap um, when it's drying, and if I need to, I'll pop it into the dryer for a couple of minutes just to release anything that I think needs to be released. It's a wonderful fabric, though. I love it. Okay, I think that's it that I needed to tell you. Now we'll go into the vlog part of this. As always, leave any questions you have down below. I'll answer those as soon as possible. And um, yeah, have a wonderful weekend. I hope you get some sewing in. I'm really hopeful that I'm gonna get some sewing in this weekend. And uh, I'll be back on Sunday with a uh, princess seam tutorial. We're gonna be doing some more pattern work again. I am gonna use some contrasting paper so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better and using dark pens. But I'm gonna show you how to do a full bust adjustment on a princess seam as well as how to raise or lower the apex of a princess seam um, if you need to do that. So that will be Sunday's video. Okay, hope you have a great weekend and I will see you guys again next time. Bye! Good morning everyone. Happy, um, what is today, Wednesday? <laughs> so I was, my plan was to get this vlog going much earlier in the week. Um, Monday I spent finishing up um, my Distachify fabrics um, that I still need to make up the pajamas that you saw. And then I had filming and stuff that I did on Monday that you saw on Tuesday, that video. And then yesterday I was like, okay, that's fine. Y'all finish that up and then get back to Rayon for the rest of the week. And then yesterday <laughs> my kids had their orthodontist appointment um, late morning. And I knew it was going to be a little bit of a lengthy one because my daughter was getting her braces off, but it ended up being two hours long. I've never sat in that <laughs> um, office for so long before. My son's appointment took like, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe. And so he was sitting there with me most of the time. I think he was just so ready to go. I actually could have run him home because we live close to orthodontist, but anyway. Um, and then it trans from there, we had to go and pick up one of my daughter's friends. And then it was orientation day up at the school where they got, you know, their school picture taken for the yearbook and for their school ID. They picked up their schedules, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they got to find their lot where their locker was and then figure out where all their classrooms and stuff were. Um, my kids go to a very large high school, like a really large high school. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what the student population is now. Last year it was close to 6,000 students, but I think the graduating class last year was a very large class. Um, so I think it might be closer to like 5,500 students up at that um, school. And they just keep adding on to the building. It's a college campus. I've broken my toe. If you watched, I'm pretty sure I've broken my toe. Um, so having to like hobble around <laughs> the halls. And now that they're sophomores, you know, last year they were kind of stuck in the freshman, there's a freshman center that's attached to the main body of the school, but a lot of their like core classes were in the freshman center last year. Um, but this year they're all over the place. So they're having, luckily there's 10 minute passing periods, but they're gonna be all over the place. So we did all that yesterday. And then by the time we got home, I was exhausted. Um, <laughs> My foot hurt. I was exhausted. And yesterday was my 19th wedding anniversary. So my husband was in the office yesterday. So when he came home, he's like, well, let's go out for dinner. Let's leave the kids at home and, you know, let them film themselves. So there's a really cute restaurant that we keep meaning to try and we've yet to try. Um, and it opened right before COVID hit, unfortunately. Um, but it's in our little downtown area of our town. Um, they do like 
Southern, Southern fair, but specifically like Savannah, Georgia type fair. Um, it was really good. I had some braised ribs with short ribs with some cheese grits. Mm, it's really good. He had pork chops. It was a really good meal. Um, so anyway, all that to say, I got zero sewing done yesterday, which was fine. Every, I mean, it was a day that I needed to be wife and mom, um, more so than Tomcat Stitchery. So I did do uh, some, I did do quite a bit of computer work in the morning yesterday. Anyway, I'm looking at my stack of fabrics here and, um, of the rayons. And I still have two things I wanted to get done with my, for my daughter that can be worn into the fall, but I'd like to get those made up, but I'll wait and do that next week. So I'm looking at my rayons here. So this is what I'm thinking. Um, I've made up one dress. My, um, is it Ho Holyoke, Holyoke, um, cashmere dress. It's up on Minerva. I will, I'll insert somewhere, um, footage of me actually in it, but I did finish that dress. I did it off camera. I just needed a project to do to like sit and sew and have the TV on and not, um, be worrying about, you know, pulling out the camera and that kind of thing. Every now and again, I, I mean, I just need that. So I went ahead and did that off camera, but love the way that turned out. <laughs> Wore it uh, to church on Sunday. Just really love that dress. I think it's very flattering. Um, I like the maxi length. I think that's fun. Um, anyway, so I got that one done. That's what it looks like on me. Um, and I'll probably, I'm going to do a roundup of all the rayon things that I've made so I can kind of talk a little bit more about the patterns. So I'll talk more about the dress in that video. Okay. So today I'm staring at three pattern or three, um, fabrics because I have three others. I have six fabrics that I still wanted to get cut out and made into stuff. One fabric I wanted to get cut made into two things. Um, I think I'm going to wait on those three. I'm going to do these three first because these are summer specific, kind of. And I think they'll be quick. All right, so the first one, I want to get this tiger rayon. This is so pretty. This fabric made up today. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I cut out my rayon. So I will do that. So I've got this one here. Here, let me grab them. One second. Um, I've got this Rifle Paper Company fabric for my daughter. I already have the kind tin ready to go for her um, because I made her a white one um, when I was uh, sewing with my friend a couple weekends ago. And uh, so I've got the pattern that's already right here and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one up. This is really more for her fall wardrobe, but go ahead and make that one up um, because it's out here. And as things come up, I will show you those. And then I've got this gorgeous, I think this is called Sun Palms, maybe. It's one of the exclusive Minerva prints. I just think this is gorgeous. So this one's going to be another pair of sky shorts. Um, I made the other ones in that beautiful Lady McElroy um, viscose. The last vlog, you saw those. Make another pair out of this and then also make myself a um, Montrose. So this is going to be the cashmere at Montrose, the regular. And then this one's going to be the Montrose with the Alton sleeves. And so, and I've got all of that like already laid out. So I think those will be all quick makes and I've got the patterns like all out and ready to go. The other ones that I wanted to work on today and tomorrow, today and tomorrow are going to be the two days um, for this vlog Ugh. are um, this one from June and Lou. Oh, I just think that's fabulous. I do want to get this one. This one will probably be the next one I make up after those three um, because I want to start wearing this. And this is going to be the uh, cadence, the uh, maxi length, I think, cadence that I'm going to do in this one. And then I'm, I, I don't know. I, I would like to get this one made up. I don't have to get this one made up though. Um, so we'll see. This one I'm going to do probably the last. This is going to be obviously fall wear, but I do need to get this made up because this is a Minerva fabric that I was gifted in exchange for a post. Love this. It's going to be a shirt dress. It's going to be the Aria by Love Notions, um, and I'm going to extend it to be midi length. So it's just I have to dig the pattern out for this. <laughs> I already have the dress pattern uh, printed off and stuff because I've already made the dress. I'm just going to lengthen the skirt for this version, um, but I just need to dig it out and get it um pressed and all that kind of stuff. So yes, that is what I'm planning. So I'm kind of going back and forth. I think that I want this to be the cadence, but this could also be the chalk and notch, um, or good midi. And this could actually be a maxi cadence. 
I still really want to make an Upton out of some rayon, but I may wait. My, you know, the fall ones that I should, the ones that were a little bit more autumn, uh, autumnal colors. Actually, I think what I will do, ooh, I need to think about this, because I am getting their second um, batch of fabrics, Minerva. They had um, two different um, lines of prints that came out, like 20 each. Well, that second set, it's been up for pre-order for a while now. But I think, because um, I was gifted one of those pieces for, um, as well, and I think that that should be arriving here soon. And those, they're kind of bright colors. But maybe I would do a Upton in that and make it more of an autumnal one. Yeah, we're going to see. But anyway. So we'll see if this one does in fact get made up. I may just put that aside for next summer, but these two are definitely gonna get made up here soon as well. But we'll put all three of these aside for right now so that I can um, get to these other three. Okay, so I'm gonna really quickly take you over to the cutting table and show you how I um, cut out my rayon and how I keep it from shifting and all that jazz, um, you know, cause it, rayon can shift. And so I showed you stay stitching in the last vlog. So I'm just going to show you how I cut out my fabric. Um, and it'll be easy in these shorter lengths because um, it's just easier for me to like pan out and stuff and show you. So let's get going. Okay. So one of the things that I had a lot of questions about was how I cut out my rayon fabric. Um, I'm going to be cutting out a Montrose and I'm cutting out UB um, with a scoop neck. Gonna set those pattern pieces aside for just a minute. Okay, so one of the things you need to make sure is that things are on grain and rayon can be slippery. Now I've chosen a, this one is a, a narrow rayon, so hopefully it, um, I can get all this in in the camera angle. <laughs> okay, so one of the things we need to make sure is I'm laying this wrong side down. I like to cut with my um, fabrics right side out. I have had people that are like, why do you do that? Because I think a lot of times it is recommended to do right sides in. I just like being, I like being able to see where my print is when I'm placing my pattern pieces on it, especially when it's got stuff like these tigers on it. Um, I also like it, I think it's much easier when I put a pin in to mark things to just separate my layers and mark the same spot right here, as opposed to marking, you know, picking up the paper, marking, and then flipping it over and marking. So that is my preference and why I like to do this. Okay, so let's talk about putting things on grain first and then I will talk my tips and tricks for cutting things out. Okay, so I'm gonna put this wrong sides down and again, rayon can be very floaty. So we just kinda wanna be careful. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm just kinda starting in the middle of the yardage here. Um, you can start on any end. I just wanna make sure everything's laying nice and smooth. So that when I take the opposite selvage and match it onto that selvage. Okay. I want things to be on grain. Now I actually got really lucky and things are, are like really on grain here, but <laughs> I'm going to show you. This is a really nice rayon as well, and so it's not quite as floaty as others. I'm just spreading this out up. But let me show you what it will look like when things are not laid on top of each other on grain. One second, let me get this kind of laid out. Okay, and you want your selvage edges to match up pretty well. All right. So let's say that things are not on grain. And when you lay things down and you match up your selvages, let's say you're getting some like wrinkling like this. If you read the wrinkles, I also do this standing up sometimes. Um you know, where I'll hold my fabric selvages together and just let the fabric hang. This means that this is not on grain. And the mo I mean, you can try, you know, 
smoothing things out as much as possible, your selvages aren't going to match up. What this means is that you need to scooch that top layer over to the left a bit and just keep scooching. I'm still getting a little bit of it here. So I just want to keep scooching until that fold line just wants to go perfectly flat. And that it's as easy as that, as putting things on grain. Again, your selvages should match up. And you can stand and let the fabric dangle and then kind of, that's a little trickier. I do do that though. Um, and then once you have one section that is on grain, you're just gonna smooth everything out. Make sure that those selvages are together though. That should work pretty well. Okay, so that is the name of the game for getting things on grain to begin with. Okay, just wanting to really be careful there. Now, another thing you can do is cut out single layer, which means um, you would just need to, sorry, let me get this all <laughs> spread out. Okay, so if you were cutting things out single layer, that would mean that this is just one layer. It's not folded on top of itself. And you would cut, for instance, well, both of these have to be cut on the fold. So you would have to do, you know, cut everything out, and then flip your pattern piece to cut the other side out, if that makes sense, which can be done. And I can definitely do, I, I plan to do a tutorial where I show you how to do pattern matching across like a button up shirt. Um, and I, I mean, I can show you that, that similar how to cut out single layer with things on the fold. I could do that as a separate video, a little tutorial as well. Okay, so you just need to remember that you are cutting out you know, if this were single layer, a sleeve like this, and then a sleeve like that, because you want mirror image sleeves. If things are on the fold, they can just, you know, be up facing forward, and you can cut them out that way. Okay, cutting out slippery fabrics. I'm probably going to get some pushback on this. Um, I cut out using a rotary cutter and pattern weights, and the reason that I cut out using, and these are um, washers from Lowe's actually, two inch washers. You can, you don't have to use actual pattern weights, anything that will weight down the pattern. The reason that I like doing this is because there is no distortion when you go to cut. And what I mean by that, and I realize this is paper, like um, notebook paper because it was from a, a printed out um, pattern, but the same with tissue. If you are laying your pattern down. Am I? Let's try and uh, scooch this down. Work with me. There we go. Okay. If I am laying my, my pattern piece down, I think you're right on the edge, but um, laying my pattern piece down. And if I am putting, get some pins out here. And if I'm putting, pinning my pattern, whether it's tissue paper or whatever, to my fabric, when I go to pin that in, you are lifting the fabric up in order to get that pin to go through the fabric and the pattern piece, okay? So that causes distortion. And if you've got something really floaty and shifty, like a rayon or a silk, um, you, it's gonna, it will easily get off grain and easily shift on you. Another thing, I've also seen people, let's pretend this isn't cut on the fold, that, um, you know, we'll use pattern weights, which is an option. Use pattern weights, but still use scissors. But let me remind you also, when you're cutting out with scissors, you are, um, you have to lift the fabric. I mean, the scissors themselves lift the fabric up. Can you see me? lift the fabric up in order for you to get in to do your cutting, that distorts um, as well and can pull things off grain. That is why I don't like using pins and scissors to cut out. Now I do use my scissors for various things. Um, I you know clip my notches and stuff like that with scissors, but you are going to easily distort your patterns, especially if you're using slinky fabrics. Some fabrics, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I know that people have preferences and they just like using their scissors to cut things out. I mean, you go to a tailor 
And I mean, like I'm talking like a couture tailor, like that makes, you know, um, handmade men's suits. They will 100% be using scissors, but they are also cutting out single layer and they trace out their patterns with chalk onto the fabric. So there's no distortion of pattern and fabric. Does that make sense? So they'll put pattern pieces down, weight them, draw around them with their chalk pieces, pull them up, and then cut them out with scissors. So there's no chance of things getting off grain because it was drawn onto the fabric before you start cutting. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So my preference is a cutting mat, weights, and a rotary cutter because there is zero chance, well not zero, but there are very small chance of things getting distorted when you cut out. So Another plus of this, you know, you don't have to have a ton of room. If you have, um, you know, your sewing machine lives in a closet unless you're using it and then you're sitting at a kitchen table or dining room table, you can buy, you know, a couple of different um, cutting mats, bump them together. You can even tape them together at the wrong side with like packing tape or something so they're not sliding around. Throw that out on your kitchen table and then use that to cut out. It's actually going to be much better on your back because you're standing up and not down on the floor. Obviously, some patterns have bigger pieces, but for the most part, you can just kind of move your fabric um, and cut things out. So it's not as, it's not space constrictive, if that makes sense. And then you just fold up your, you know, if you have two cutting mats with a taped seam down the middle, you just fold those in half, shove them in a closet, um, and you're ready to go. So that is why you're just going to get a lot less distortion when you are cutting, if you're cutting out this way, when you are cutting with um, a rotary cutter and pattern weights. So that is my big tip for cutting things out. Now, um, let's talk here. Let me actually lay things out and I'll actually cut a piece out with you. Sorry, I know I'm going off of out of frame here. I'm just gonna set this one up here. I don't have a ton of fabric here, so I need to make sure Okay, so and yeah, that's gonna all be in. Just gonna barely have enough. <laughs> Yay. Okay, I don't need these pins right now. All right, so when I am cutting out my pattern pieces, these both get cut out on the fold, the front and back. This is the Montrose by Cashmerette. I just throw down some pattern weights to keep things nice and weighted. And then it's super quick. Again, are you able to, I can't get up on my toes because my toe is broken. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna start here at the bottom and you just are following the line. I also get asked the size of rotary cutter. Um, I use my smaller one probably more often and this is a, hold on, I'll look in just a second. This is a 28 millimeter one because I just feel like it gets in to the little corners and makes the curves, the tight curves a little bit better. However, I also do have a 45 millimeter one that I use, I like this one for heavier fabric. So if I'm cutting out denim or um, heavy sweatshirting, I, I do, the heavier fabrics I do use this. I just find that it kind of, it cuts better just cause it's a little heavier duty. Um, but this for my lighter weight fabrics, I use probably the most. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use my tracing wheel here on the neckline cause I'm cutting the scooped neck. So then I can lift up my pattern and that did not mark at all. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, you're not gonna be able to see that, but Just wanted to cut that lower neckline. All right, so then my scissors do come in handy. Um, I also totally wasn't paying attention to pattern placement. I really hope I don't have a tiger on my boob. I might, or like a tiger in the dart. So then I can mark the dart, or my um, legs of my dart. I like to mark 
center front because it's on the fold. And then I can just take a pen, stick it right into the apex there. Then pull out a friction pen. So this is what, another reason I like it um, right sides up because then I can just pull this back and mark really easily. Okay. So now once I've cut that piece out, is I very carefully will fold it up with the pattern paper just to help keep it, I kind of roll it up, not really fold it, roll it up with the pattern paper to help keep things in, um, from getting too far out of um, shape. But I am gonna say, you when you cut out your rayon pieces, you really need to cut out and then go sew them. Um, you know, don't cut them out and then come back in a week because just sitting there, they will get out of shape. So, um, my, one of my biggest tips is that one, you know, don't cut until you're ready to like, sew it either that day or the next day, um, because they will go out of shape pretty easy. So hopefully that answers those questions. Let me know if you have any more in the comments below. Okay. Let me show you I have finished my shirt down a little bit more <laughs> all right so I have finished oh my gosh my shirt um again this is the uh cashmere at Montrose I did get which one I did get kind of a funny tiger in my armpit you know I'm not really worried about that I'm very excited though that that guy is front and centered which is whew, because <laughs> I, I wasn't, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, I, this is just such a great little woven t-shirt pattern. Um, I love the colors in this. What is happening with my hair? Uh, I think this is going to be really fun, styled under stuff, styled, you know, just with various bottoms. Um, I still need to make my Belize shorts, which are kind of this pink color, kind of coral. It's kind of this coral color. Anyway, there is my new Montrose and my wonderful um, uh, tiger fabric that Candace gifted me, which is so kind. Thank you, Candace. Uh, yeah, so I'll have more. Um, here, let me sit down. Sorry, sorry. So I will have more in-depth um, video and styling and all that kind of stuff in the I'll do the reveal video so you can guys can kind of see how I'm going to style this and stuff. But yeah, just a little quick sneaky peek. I'm very excited about my, my tigers on top of my um, tropical print. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to do my daughter's top next, the Kyneton. And then um, we'll get on to the second pair of Sky Shorts as well as the um, other Montrose that has the Alton sleeves. Which that sleeve plat pattern is no joke. It's huge. <laughs> because it's got the pleats and stuff in it. I'm very excited about that. So um, yeah, let me get to my daughters. And if anything comes to mind that I haven't talked about with Rayon yet, I will come back and tell you. Okay, it's the end of the day on Wednesday. I think I'm gonna stop for now. So I have finished making my Montrose, which I just showed you. And I also finished making my daughter her chitin. She's very excited about this. This she thinks looks pretty great. Um, it's actually be a really good first day of school top for her um, with some white shorts maybe. So we'll see, but she's very, um, I love that fabric. And I have just enough left over for like some, and uh, some of this as well for like, um, actually I could probably get a camisole out of the leftovers of this. This will probably um, be like good pocket linings and stuff like that, but I've got some um, good size scraps of this that um, are fun bias binding. I could do that as well. I don't know, we'll see. Okay. But I've got those two. And then I have cut out, um, there you can see, I have cut out my Sky Shorts and my Montrose with the Alton sleeves. 
And then just barely right here, you can see a pile of um, bias binding strips for bias binding. So I can um, do that first thing tomorrow. I know I just said that you should, when you cut out, you should really get to sewing, but um, <laughs> this is really, uh, this Minerva stuff is pretty, uh, pretty good viscose. Um, it's a really good quality. So I find that it's not stretching as much as maybe some lesser qual quality ones. Uh, I mean, all rayon will stretch, but I will make this up tomorrow. So I'm not too worried about it. It should be fine. Everything's folded over nicely on itself. Um, so yeah, I can get those last two things done tomorrow. And then we will look at the um, other fabrics. I need to get those cut out. Definitely the two, the June and Lou one and the um, Navy for the Aria. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I That may be it for this vlog. Um, obviously I will get all that stuff sewn up. So that may be in the Rayon final video. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's what I was able to get done today. So I will get on here. I get cracking early tomorrow morning and, uh, yeah, I will see you then. Bye. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, <clears throat> the fourth. <laughs> um, okay. So today oh, I've got my new Harmony blouse on that you saw me make in my other, um, rayon vlog and I've got the matching sky shorts on. They're so comfortable. So, uh, today I have got we're going to work on the stuff that I was cutting out last night. So I have a whole bunch of bias strips that I'm going to make into um, bias. Actually, let me get over here. Got to sew that first <laughs> to bias binding. Um, and then I'm going to work on my Montrose with the Alton sleeves and then make it the other pair of sky shorts. And then I think I'm going to cut out my cadence. Um, yes, I'm going to cut out my maxi cadence. Uh, I need to put that pattern together because I don't have it. The maxi was different than the other um, dress length that I made because I'm using the, is that right? Maybe there is some crossover. Anyway, I'm just going to print out a separate one for the maxi. Or I already have. Um, and I think I'm going to make it sleeveless. I think so. Um, just so it's nice, easy, and breezy and wonderful. Easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> Anyway, and then I would really like to, um, if I have time, work on the Aria with that fall fabric. I am really starting to get into the mood to sew for fall. Um, I'm also ready to switch and not be sewing rayon anymore for a little bit. <laughs> Just getting bored with it. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the plan for today. I thought that I would, and I may do it in the intro, um, I've taken my shower gadgets at the... Um, groomer today so she's getting all beautiful uh it's raining which is why my hair is very poofy at the moment but I have washed and dried it I just haven't straightened it yet so I am gonna do that because I'm gonna film the intro to this video um I think I'm gonna wait though with the tut Sunday's tutorial and maybe film that on Saturday because tomorrow I'm doing shoes with my son my daughter's going to the zoo I may have already said that my daughter's going to the zoo with her one of her good friends um, so it's just going to be the two of us tomorrow. My husband will be working. So I thought that we would work on those shoes. Luckily is very small or very uh, slow growing feet. So the shoes that we started working on last summer will still fit him. Um, but we need to get those made so we can actually get some wear out of them before he moves on to the next size. So that is kind of what we've got going on today. I'm not sure that I'm going to have on. I mean, everything that I'm kind of doing with Ray on today is stuff I've done before um, in the first vlog, but I think I am going to walk you through at the beginning um, how I pre-wash it because I had some questions about that and then how I take care of it going forward. So I'll probably just talk about that though in the intro um, of the video and walk you guys through that. Okay, I will check back in. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try my, <laughs> look at this print clashing. Look at that. Okay, I've not made the sky shorts yet in this fabric. Um, but this is kind of the look because these are the sky shorts, just a different fabric. I can't go up on my toes because of my injured toe, <laughs> my injured foot. Um, okay, these are the Alton sleeves. Now the pleats do get lost here in this busy fabric and I kind of knew that was going to happen. But I just really wanted to try them out. These are so much fun. I can just picture, I'm also loving, I'm absolutely in love with this fabric. It is like my entire color palette in a <laughs> fabric. Um, I got quite a bit of bias binding made out of this, which I'm very excited about, but um, I can just picture this with jeans this fall or 
like a skirt or I mean pants just all sorts of stuff I think this is gonna you know even though the colors are bright they're in my color palette and even though leaves read a little summer to me I think I'm gonna be able to make this go a little bit um fall so I'm gonna have some brightness in my fall colors even if my my base colors are gonna probably be more like the um rusty browns like warm browns um kind of type thing also have some navy in there like some warm navy but what do you guys think yeah I think this is fun I love this Montrose this is just <laughs> really working out well okay I'm gonna get the matching shorts made up real quick and uh, we'll go from there okay so I finished my shorts they are right here um, I mean, it's literally the same things that I'm wearing right now, <laughs> just in that same. I love this fabric. It's just so good. Such a fun fabric. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to do a video um, of like a, a roundup of all the patterns that I did during this both vlogs kind of. And I'm going to stop for today. Um, and call it so I can get the actual, I put on my makeup and done my hair so I can do the actual video part of this and get it edited and uploaded for tomorrow. But um, I am going to do a roundup at the end and I'll talk more about the patterns because I also, you guys didn't see this, but this is my um, Hollyoke, Hollyoke um, dress. The buttons get lost on it, but it does have, because this is a faux button placket but it does have um, the buttons on there. And I also, you'll notice I did this fabric upside down. So many people were like, oh my gosh, those leopard spots look like hearts. And I'm like, oh, they do. Now I can't unsee that. So I did them upside down so that maybe they wouldn't look as heart-ish. <laughs> or maybe that's just in my head. I love this thing. Anyway, um, I still want to do my, um, hold on, my cadence and also my aria, which is like kind of fall sewing. But, um, I do want to get both of those done. And like I said, I've got another fabric from Minerva that is coming that is their second batch of um, exclusive viscose prints. So I'll need to get that one made up too. But I thought, you know, I've kind of walked you through all of my tips and tricks now um, with Rayon. So I'm going to call it for now, but I'll probably add those things into the video of like the wrap up. And I'm thinking that video is going to come out on Friday next week because um, Tuesday we're gonna talk about fabric shopping and how to shop sales economically and not lose our heads because it's gonna look like I lost my head, but I was shopping very economically. This just arrived. This is my, <laughs> it's like a body bag. My husband's like, what was just delivered? And I was like, it looks like a dead body, <laughs> just my fabric. Um, that's from the Minerva sale that they had just last weekend. So when you buy a body's bag worth of clothes, they actually don't send it Royal Mail. They send it DHL and DHL is super quick. So I think they dispatched it. So the sale was last weekend. It was Saturday and Sunday last weekend. I think my order got dispatched Monday morning and it's here, got here on Thursday, which is crazy fast. And that's not always the case with Minerva. Most of the times when my smaller orders, when they come um, via Royal Mail, so, and then it'll come through USPS once it gets to the US, usually I get those about a week after they've been dispatched, so shipped. Um, anyway, we're going to talk Tuesday about why I made the decisions. I'll show you my haul, um, how to shop for fabric economically, how to make use of sales without just buying all the things. Um, so that everything has a plan as a way to save money. And again, this was kind of what spurred me on to think of doing the whole month of September as like economical sewing and how to sew economically and um, not break the bank. So that's kind of what spurred that on for September. Okay, I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, I'll just see you again on Sunday. We're going to be doing a princess seam tutorial on how to do a full bust adjustment on a princess seam. And I'm also gonna show you how to raise or lower the, um, it would be a dart point if it were a dart, but it's not, it's a, <laughs> it's a princess seam. So how to raise or lower the um, fullest part of the curve there, the apex of the um, princess seam. So that's gonna be Sunday's tutorial. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend, get a lot of sewing in, and I will see you guys again on Sunday.